I just hit 1k subs. We popping this open. One thing y'all gotta understand about me. A sip or two of this, and I am gone. I'm gone. Look. I'll be the first to admit, when it comes to weed, drinking, it don't take much for me to reach that point. You feel me? First sip, bro. This fit, I'm really doing this for y'all, bro. I'm really doing this for y'all in celebrations, bro. One K subs, you bugging. And this is my first time trying the blue Bel Air. God damn. You already see the title of the video, Drake versus Kendrick. I already did the Cole versus Kendrick. I said I was gonna react to this. Now, my last video, that shit went crazy. Y'all was showing a lot of love. I appreciate it. But I started noticing more shit, like about future and the beef and whatever's going on. Bruh, the album title is We Don't Trust You. Right? What's Metro Boomin's tag? What's his producer tag? When that right before the beat drops, what's his producer tag? If young Metro don't trust you, I'm gonna shoot you. Who was the one that created that tag for Metro Boomin? Fucking Future. Now they both link up for a collab project, and the title is We Don't Trust You. Shit, this shit is real, bruh. This shit is real. Also, in the reaction video, I ain't really give Future his props for his verse. Cause I ain't gonna lie, I was mainly trying to I was mainly just waiting for Kendrick. I was mainly focusing on Kendrick's verse and when Future I did listen to the whole song and during the reaction, but I was just so hyped for Kendrick to come on that I wasn't really paying attention to Future's verse. Bruh, Future killed that shit. He killed that shit. But look, fuck that. This is what we here for right now. This is what we here for. I'm excited for this video right here. Because that Cole versus Kendrick video, that's cool. They was throwing shots at each other throughout the years. All that is cool. But Drake versus Kendrick? Oh, yeah, this is where the real shit is at. This is where the real shit is at. Because Kendrick been taking shots at Drake since 2009, and a lot of people don't know that. The Kendrick Lamar EP, hopefully he brings it up in this video. Hopefully he goes that back. And if he don't, it's I. Right. I'm here. I'm here to bring you the facts. I'm here to bring you the facts. I got Friday on the TV. No weed, though. No weed. We drinking. 47 minutes long? Come on, bro. We litty. Let's go. Let's go. Hold on. Let me get, let's get into it. Drake and Kendrick Lamar hate each other. Well, at least one of them hates the other person, while the other has tried many times to be friendly and squash things. One rapper seemed to believe that they were actually friends, while the other looked at their relationship as a business transaction. Mm -hmm. After two weeks of research, it's safe to say that one MC has lost every ounce of respect for the other. You guys really liked my last video where I broke down all the subliminal disses from Drake's new album, so I decided to stick with a similar style. And in my last video, I, I asked you guys to hit the like button, which is something I don't usually do, but the video did really well, and I don't know if that's why, but just do me a favor and hit that like button again. Thanks. So when it comes to Kendrick and Drake, they weren't always on bad terms. Back in 2011, Drake had already blown up, Ooh. and Kendrick had yet to release a major debut album. Now, Kendrick was definitely buzzing, but he was far from the star that Drake was. Even back in 2009, Kendrick mentioned Drake on a track, where he pretty much admits that he thinks he's oh. better. Oh, shit! He mentioned it! See, she listens to the Drake, and all I can say is damn. He's a nigga much better than me, baby. I know. So Kendrick identified really early on that the mainstream hip hop wasn't really his. Damn, I ain't listened to that shit However, in a minute. However, on June 16th, 2011, Kendrick performed in Toronto for the very first time, and when Drake found out he was in the city, he decided to hit him up so that they could meet. I need y'all to know, it's my first motherfucking time out here, you dig? And Kendrick would speak about meeting Drake in a double XL magazine and said, that's a real good dude, he got a real genuine soul. We clicked immediately. And it was during that meeting that Kendrick provided Drake with a copy of his unreleased album, Section 80. Word? Visions of Martin Luther staring at me. Kendrick said that Drake was the first person outside of his team to hear Section 80 and that Drake was blown away by the project. 
I even found a 2011 tweet where Drake posted Kendrick's lyrics from ADHD. We never do listen unless it comes with an 808. Drake liked Kendrick's music so much that he asked him to be on his upcoming sophomore album, Take Care. Throughout the track, Kendrick talks about meeting Drake for the first time and how he was surprised that Drake wasn't fake like most of the music business. I'm not gonna lie. When it comes to that Take Care interlude that Kendrick was on, bro, come on, bro. I'm a big ass Kendrick fan, but that interlude for me, just me personally, uh, bro, I skipped that shit, bro. I skipped that interlude, bro. Because it's just like, I don't know. That interlude ain't really, I don't know. I ain't really fucking with that interlude, bro. I never Give really fucked with that. He was gonna sell me a fast word like the rappers I know. Kendrick outlines how Drake showed him a taste of what being rich and famous actually looked like. Sat down with a few drinks located where you can't see us. A white waitress on standby when we need her. On the track, Kendrick really battles with the idea of becoming famous as he's worried that it will change him for the worse. Yeah, like, damn, this next level that I'm going to, will I get caught up in the lifestyle and would that make me or break me? And that was what the whole record was about when I did the interlude. And I mean, even back then, we could see the difference in these two artists where Drake is talking about the Maybachs and his lavish life, and Kendrick is worried about his mental health and his, you know, his relationships, his friendships. It's interesting because just this right two here. or three years later, the dude did get depressed from just being in the industry. I didn't know you were suffering from depression the way you said you was on the album. Like, yeah. did, did the industry cause that? Not, not the industry, just the change. And Drake only continues to show Kendrick more love by taking him and ASAP Rocky on his Club Paradise tour. This is my brother ASAP Rocky. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. I'm on this motherfucking Club Paradise tour, matter of fact. My nigga Drake, TDE, hot power in this motherfucking, you know? And Drake has always claimed to have fought with management to take these guys on tour because his label had other plans. You know, it's people I can put on here that the label wants me to put on here, but I fight for this one reason, man. Like, I fight to promote what I love, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I fight to promote the music that I truly love, so. Drake would mention this he again in 2016 oh, shit. on his track 4 p.m. Yep. in Calabasas. I was, go, I was just, I was literally being to go on the road and I told him no and drew for Kendrick and Rocky. However, to make Kendrick the right choices with the world quickly watching. catches up with Drake. As well, what I was going to say though, that's another thing that I've been seeing a lot of comments ever since that Kendrick verse dropped. Niggas talking about some, oh, Drake gave Kendrick his first shot with the take hit in the loop. Bruh, clearly there's something wrong with Drake, bruh. There's something wrong with Drake. Because it's like... Bro, everybody that Drake was cool at one point with, everybody that he gave a verse to, a hit song to, he just so happens to end up beefing with them, bro. He ended up beefing with Kendrick, and they was cool at one point. Ended up beefing with Meek Mill, and they was cool with it at one point. Ended up beefing with Future, and they, they cool at one point. I'm sure him and Metro was cool at one point. Ended up beefing. So it's like, bro, I wouldn't even be surprised if all this shit that him and Cole was going through right now, if they even end up beefing. Like, come on, bro. This clear. Like, you ain't about to tell me that everybody's just like a fucked up person and Drake is the good one. Hell no, bro. There's clearly something wrong with Drake, bro. There's something wrong with that motherfucker. A year later, he dropped one of the best hip hop albums of all time, Good Kid Mad City. I used to be jealous of him to follow. He was the one to follow. And Black Boy Fly is a, a bonus track, but to me, that's one of the, the most beautiful songs on that album. Absolutely amazing storytelling. And it was on that album where Drake returned. <laughs> Nigga over sing about me, I'm dying to thirst. That's what you going with? A Black Boy Fly? It's the favor and gives Kendrick a feature on Poetic Justice. I really hope you play this, cause oh girl, you test my patience. And on the day that the album dropped, <coughs> Drake even posted a tweet saying, Congratulations to Kendrick, incredible body of work, honored to be a part of it. Right, so what happened However, though? Like what at happened? At this point, Kendrick and Drake couldn't be more different in terms of how they approach music and life in general. Really, money really don't make me, I'm learning that now. You know, that's not really my, um, my peace of mind, having money. I love Alexa Chung's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you love the shoulders? I just love her shoulders. She's you actually are. blushing as well. She's no doubt about it, they're just two different guys. Next, we get a bit of an inside look on how Kendrick shoulders. actually sees Drake as a person when the legend himself, DMX, claims that 
he would love to beat Drake up. Man, I wish it was like maybe seven years ago. Well, maybe like like 10 years ago. Well, you know, catch the way to beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few days later, Kendrick was asked about his thoughts on DMX's rant, and he thought it was hilarious, saying that his entire tour bus nearly died of laughter. I wonder why these n in the front of the bus just cracking up, like hitting walls and shit, just crying. I'm like, what the fuck you niggas talking about? They mute, they stop laughing, right? I just hear X going off on a laptop. Just <laughs> I'm like, what's what going on? He's like, yeah, he's going in right now. <laughs> now remember, Drake is pretty sensitive, so if, if he did see that, he probably felt a way. Shit, we know so that. the two would work <laughs> we know together that. for the very last time on one of 2013's Damn. biggest hits, ASAP Rocky's Fucking Problems. Fucking Problems. Girl, I know you won't do it, do it. Girl, I'm Kendrick Lamar. But well, that was it. After that, you never see these two on a track together. Damn, I just noticed he got nip in the background. Good shit. RP to nip, bro. RP to nip. In 2013, things started to get a lot more competitive between the two because at this point, Kendrick was not just. Whoa, is that SZA? Yo, bro, that's wild. Yo, that's wild. A lot more competitive between the two because at this point. Yo, it's crazy to think how SZA was signed to TDE like in 2012, 2013, and she ain't really even blow up until like her control album. Control album. And then ever since, she's just been getting bigger and bigger. And now she's the number one artist in, on fucking TDE. I went from Kendrick to SZA. That's crazy. Because SZA was like one of the last. SZA came in with like Isaiah Rashad. And who would have thought? Who would have fucking thought? Kendrick was not just an up and comer. He had become that guy. Fat. And a lot of accolades from your peers and the hip hop icons. Thank you. Thank you. I love Kendrick Lamar. Number one on that list, Kendrick Lamar, what's up? Uh, the the hip-hop savior, it seems like. Woo! And let's not forget, Drake is still Drake. He had a phenomenal year also. Got out to Hamilton, shout out to Toronto one time. Like, the <laughs> best rap album goes, and they said take care. <laughs> oh my God! Let's go. Given the success of both artists, the media, and fans started to debate who was better, and Kendrick started off the year with a bang, when he was awarded MTV's hottest MC in hip hop. And we went through about 15 of them, narrowed wow. it down to 10. The 10 became five, the five became two. And you, Kendrick Lamar, are the hottest MC in the game, according to the MTV brain. And most of Kendrick's hip hop friends seem to be happy for him. I heard you're not happy about that. Nah, I wasn't until I found out who's number one. They made my man number one, K Dot. Yes. Drake, so I'm straight with that. However, Drake was one person that certainly did not send any sort of congratulations. Now we get into the shits. Now we get into the shits. You see, uh, all right, let's and let the video play. What about your rap peers? Did they call? I, I know it's kind of competitive, so did they say congratulations? My rap peers? Um, I think Cole. Okay. Real yeah. one, real yeah. one. And I mean, at this point, Drake's at least got to be thinking, like, this guy's starting to become a problem. He's, he's getting a little bit close now. And Kendrick's winning streak was just beginning, as two months later, he cleaned up at the 2013 BET Ooh. Awards, winning the best male hip hop artist yep. over Drake. Yep. I came up in that same county building, food stamps, welfare, section eight. And this time, and I'm up, hold on, I just want to say real quick, bro, the 2013 BET, BET Awards, not hip hop awards, BET Awards, bro, Kendrick performed, Cole performed, bro, that's one of the best BET Awards, bro. Yo, I wish I could still watch. Like, where the fuck can I watch this shit at? Time, I did find a tweet from Drake where he congratulates Kendrick on the win. Congrats to Kendrick as well. Nothing was the same. With all that said, things were about to change. And ever since, nothing was the same. Woo! August 12th, 2013 was a special moment for hip hop. And I remember that shit like it was fucking yesterday. To this day, it still stands. Yo, bro, why the fuck did you just show that motherfucker on my screen, bro? I fuck with Sexy Red, though. <laughs> I fuck with Sexy and so Red, though. one of the most exciting things to happen in the last decade. Damn! That's my shorty right there. That's my shorty. Stop talking crazy on Nice Spice, you are. 
On Big Sean's control, Kendrick let everyone in hip-hop know just how competitive he was when it came to that number one spot. I'm usually homeboys with the same because I'm rhyming with, but this is hip-hop and the should know what time it is. And that goes for Jamaica, Big Creek, my lane. Push your team, meat meals, ASAP Rocky, drink. Big Sean, J. Electron, Tyler Mac Miller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard you niggas. They don't want to hear not one more now. No, of course, you niggas. And we could really, really use a moment like that right now in hip hop. It's rain like a spay weather, good music, yay weather, champagne just tastes better. And let's just. Big Sean, stop. Big Sean, stop. I know you dropped something. Like, come on, bro. Why would you drop? I, right, bro. Yo, <laughs> give it up for Big Sean because to me, he had one of his career best verses, but it just got overshadowed because of Kendrick's verse. I said, fuck trying and not doing, cuz not doing is something a nigga not doing. I grew up the end big and pocket and got ruined. So until I got the same crib, big head in that juicy vid, bitch, I can't mother stop moving. But when it came to Kendrick's verse, nobody that he mentioned. Had a problem with it. Except and them niggas, that's fan. Except bro. I think hip hop need this shit, man. You know. You know, I've been I knew what it was for hip hop culture. I knew how important it was. He said my name, like he said my name said my couple people's name and he said he's the best rapper. I say I'm the best rapper every song I'm on. I'm yeah, but he wasn't coming at him in a disrespectful way, he's coming at him in a competitive way. So for me it's one of those things where I appreciate I didn't take it necessarily as a diss. Hip hop is competitive, but I am a competitor. Wait, sorry. Nobody had a problem except for Drake. I just like, like of course, bro. Like, why the fuck? I don't know. It, it, it just wasn't re real to me. It's like, I, I saw him after that, and it was just like, love. So it's like, was that real, or was that just like for the people? You know what no, I mean? I like, think it's a nigga, it is a sport. It is competitiveness, bro. Like, that is your fucking problem. That's this nigga's problem. That's always been his problem. Now why the fuck is name? Why is Kendrick going to perform to Toronto for the first time and this nigga's hitting him up, talking about some old linking up and shit like that? Nigga, mind your business. He be yo, bro. I, feel, I be feeling like Drake be doing it to himself, bro. He be doing it to himself. Sparring kind of sports. Yeah, but you're not at the that. same time, it's like, you know, then let it be real then, you know. I mean, because those were harsh words, right? So it's like... Oh, no, now it's very real. <laughs> now it's very real. And I'm still waiting. Listen, listen. And I'm still waiting for something. Nigga want to post on his IG talking about some I'm, I'm on tour somewhere. Whatever the fuck he said. Come on, bro. Get in that booth. Get in that booth. Tell Cole to get up off that bike and get in that booth. Don't just, you can't just say that and then see me and be like, yeah, man, what's up? Pretending like nothing ever happened. Like, that's not real. And this right here is a perfectly good example of why people call Drake soft and emotional. You can't act this way and then sit back and wonder why people are labeling you as such. Like, this is, this is why. And Word, it's bro, like, this ain't no fucking Biggie versus Pac hit him up and who shot ya. Like, all he did was mention your fucking name along with mad other people. Like, he ain't saying nothing directly to... I mean, he mentioned your name, but it's not like he fucking had the spotlight on you. It ain't like he was coming at you specifically. Bro, it was just like a competitive thing. He was raising the bar. Like, what the fuck? Why the fuck is you taking it some type of way? Everybody else is applauding Kendrick. Everybody else is giving Kendrick his props. This is a sport. This is hip-hop. This is what we do. And, of course, here comes this motherfucker, bro. Fucking Drake. Interesting, because when Drake came into the game... He seemed to understand that competition came with the genre. It's, it's a great thing, though, to be competitive with those guys because you're always pushing yourself. I mean, and look, Drake was not a rapper that you could just push around. He did go toe to toe with people before. Like who? Back in the day, a Toronto rapper by the name of Aristo seriously tried to end Drake's career, and it didn't end well for this guy. And it's the room of resolution. I'm finishing it in here. Uh, if I copy button flow, you mimicking his career. It was good riddance. It was oh, lights shit. out. It was a body. <laughs> and that's what it was, man. And that's why good riddance. And, it, and what happened? Good riddance, right? Bye. I remember when this dropped because it was all over the hip hop blogs in Canada. And yeah, we did have hip hop blogs in Canada in 2009. They did exist. With all that said, that just goes to show that Drake, Drake, no, Drake, Drake is very well aware of Kendrick's ability. 
And he's very, very well aware of the fact that he does not want no problems with Drake. I mean, he wants no problems with Kendrick. No problems with Kendrick. Drake dropped now, nothing was the same, and we get to hear the first subliminal shot for Kendrick. On the track titled The Language, Drake immediately starts out with a shot. Yup. I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. So when Kendrick's control verse dropped, Drake stated on multiple occasions that he did not find the verse impressive, that he thought it was for shock value, and that it would soon be forgotten. But it was it was real cool for like, you know, a couple weeks. But like if I asked you, for example, like, how does that verse start? Tell Flex to drop a palm in this shit. So many palms with the alarm like Vietnam in this shit. had a great first album, but he questioned whether or not he could do it again. You see, so his sense of, so it's really like Drake's sensitivity just got the best of him, and that's why the beef, that's where the beef stems from. That's where the beef stems from. Like, he's the only rapper that got mentioned and dragged it. Nobody else dragged it. It was all friendly competition. Like, bro, if you, you a rapper, you a rapper, you claiming you one of the best, you one of the hottest, nigga, get in that booth and do something. Like, what is you getting in your feelings for? Nah, now he want to be doing interviews. Now he want to be like, come on, bro. Just dragging it, bro. Just dragging it. Now we here. Now we here. Metro Future. Kendrick. I like that, nigga. Fuck the big three, nigga. It's just big me. It's just big me. First person shooter better come with three switches for all the dogs getting buried, nigga. And as far as Kendrick goes, like, I can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove. And, and, and. Consistency is how long we in? Out. 47 minutes, you only 12 minutes in. How long is that? I failed math, but we definitely gonna finish this. Drake body, claimed bro. that he was all about putting out memorable bodies of work as opposed to creating moments. When it comes to competition, I'm just I'm, I'm more worried about consistency, I'm more worried about bodies of work. However, Drake continues to send some more shots. Look any nigga that's talking that shit just to get a reaction. Again, Drake refers to Kendrick as someone that wrote the control verse to get attention. I am the kid with the motor mouth. I am the one you should worry about. A motor mouth is defined as a person who talks quickly and continuously, often without considering what they're saying. And what and what Kendrick said? What Kendrick said? Um I, I, I'm, I'm breaking down your motor mouth till I break down the engine. This ain't no warning shot, there's a red red hitch me. See my opponent then cease your existence. And then our friendship, baby, I'd rather die alone. He set that shit on one of Dr. Dre's albums, one of Dr. Dre's albums. Hopefully they fucking bring this shit up. In this Yo, bro, case- I'm not gonna lie, if y'all can't tell, please forgive me, bro. Please forgive me. I don't mean to be talking as much, pausing as much, but it, this small fucking Bel Air. Someone bro, that raps fast. Is clearly about Kendrick. Talking that shit with your back to me, just know it always get back to me. So outside of the DMX comment, there were some other interviews where Kendrick had laughed at Drake's expense. I heard about you touring with Drake. Yeah. I was like, that's dope. That's dope. And I was like, well, I hope it doesn't hang with Drake too hard because yeah. Drake isn't exactly doing what we thought he would, what many of nerdy backpackers like myself thought he might be doing a few years ago. Right. And honestly, man, at this point, I would not be one bit surprised if Kendrick said something behind Drake's back and it got back to him. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. At the 2013 BET Hip Hop Awards, Kendrick decided to throw some gas Ooh. on the fire. He went into the awards with the most nominations at 14, and Drake was a very close second with 13. However, Kendrick would be the man to come out on top, Hell yeah. Lyricist of the Year, Hell yeah. MVP of the Hell Year, yeah. Album of the Year, Hell yeah. and Feature of the Year. Hell yeah. Drake also Word. came out with a handful of awards for Best Hip Hop Video, Track of the Year, and People's Champ, However, it would be Kendrick again that stole the show. Yeah, and nothing been the same since they dropped control and took the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. See? And thi this right here is where rapping could get you, bruh. This is where rapping can get can get you. Cause why didn't Drake why didn't Drake join the cipher? Why he ain't rap? Why he didn't rap? Like you mad at Kendrick cause he's rapping? You mad at Kendrick, the hip-hop artist, doing what hip-hop artists are meant to do, are supposed to do? Nigga, he joined the cypher. He went up in the cypher. And this ain't his, his first cypher, by the way. He was like in the 2011, 2012 cypher as well with MGK, Tech 9 He was like, 
Um, I forgot how that verse go, bro. I forgot how that verse goes. Sign about Kim K, Kim Kardashian, ass shot, or whatever. Yo, so you high five. I'm bulletproof. Your shots are never penetrate. Pin a tail on the donkey, boy, you been a fake. So, pretty self-explanatory. Kendrick uses Drake's album title, Nothing Was The Same, to call him out for being sensitive regarding the control verse. And this whole thing got a lot of people excited, and just the very next day, Sway asked Kendrick if the bars were meant for Drake. Was uh people want to know was that I remember directed this interview. for Drake or anybody in, pat in particular? Uh, I don't know if having fun as usual. Uh-huh. But Drake did not seem to think so, and just a few weeks later, he came with some more subliminal shots on a future track titled Shit. And that's the name of the song, Shit. But uh I always like this record. <laughs> Took niggas out the hood like I'm from there, so you know it's all good when I come there. I hear you talk about your city like you run that, and I brought my tour to your city, you my son there. Nigga, you ain't taking, nigga, the fuck you see, and this is why you gotta watch. Bro, if I do for a fa if I do a favor for a nigga, bro, it's not we like niggas ain't out here counting favors, bro. Niggas is not out here counting favors, bro. I never counted favors. You feel me? Everything I do is out of the kindness of my heart, cause I ain't gotta do anything. And let's just say if Drake was to never give Kendrick those opportunities of taking him on tour, putting him on take care as a in the lewd, bro, Kendrick was still gonna drop good Kim Ass City. He was still gonna be Kendrick. At the end of the day, you didn't have to do that. You did it out of the kindness of your heart. Yeah, good looks. If I'm Kendrick, nigga, good looks. Uh, good luck. Drake, good looks for looking out. Salute. You feel me? But if you didn't do that, nigga, I was still going to be, you feel me? I was still going to be me. I was still going to be me. I was still headed there. You was still going to see me. That control verse was still going to come. Me being on that Take Care album ain't dictate anything. The fuck? And to me, this is one of the best subliminal shots of the whole saga. Like, Drake sounds like Jay-Z here. It's a very Hove-like thing to say where he's just completely sunning Kendrick. So, it's been known that Kendrick puts on heavy for the West Coast. And what, and, what, and what Drake said, he probably gonna mention it, but what Drake said in that fucking one record with DJ Khaled, and like that, and like your boy from Compton said... You know this dick ain't free. Like you see, that's the problem with Drake. That's the problem with Drake. He's too, he's too like, yo, I don't know what's wrong with this nigga, bro. But it's like, no, nigga, shit ain't sweet. Shit ain't sweet oh, at all. That he's the king, but Drake refers to him as his son because Kendrick went on his first big tour with Drake. And of course they had some shows in California. At the time, even Kendrick admitted that he was not used to these large crowds. The transition of me doing the 2000 V's, I've been doing back then. Yeah, but that's normal though, bro. Like, that's normal, bro. Like, come on, bro. Don't hold that shit over a nigga's head, bro. I even found a Kendrick tweet from 2012 like when he was shit. on like, holding that with shit Drake, over the, like, where he says, on, that's some finally home shit. LA, club paradise, let's see what happens tonight. And if a nigga said my name, he the high shit. But if I say that nigga name, he said a high shit. Up, lucky I'm feeling to the gossip. So this one clear. I'm not gonna lie, I've never even heard that song, bro. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I've never heard that song. And this is coming from a nigga who, bro, like this is my era, bro. This is my era. I paid attention to everything. And this is Drake. Nigga, Drake is Drake. Of course, when it comes to like rapper beef and someone versus someone, you know. You know, but at the end of the day, I give credit where credit is due. Drake is Drake. I've never heard that, bro. I've never heard that. Clearly a reference to Kendrick's control verse. A lot of MCs responded to Kendrick with a verse of their own. And Drake is basically claiming that, given the fact that he's a bigger artist, if he says Kendrick's name, he's just doing him a favor. And this next one's not even a diss. I just want to show you guys my favorite line from the... Jordan, Mike Will made the beat. 
Shit's fire. Come on. However, just a few days later, an nah. issue of Vive magazine nah. was released. Nah. And Drake talks about Kendrick again, stating how he didn't like how the control verse messed with the rollout of his album. Where it became an issue is... that I was rolling out an album while that verse was still bubbling. So my album rollout became about this thing. Drake then continues to position himself as someone that again. is above anything that Kendrick has to say. He's hungry, so he's going to do what he has to do, like the BET cipher, but again, it's not enough for me to go. I have to realize I'm being baited and I'm not gonna fall. Jordan doesn't have to play pickup to prove that he can play ball. No offense. Nigga, clearly, nigga, bro, you're just scared, bro. Clearly, this nigga just scared. He don't want to go back and forth with Kendrick. He does not want to go back and forth. Bro, because he even now, even now, I feel like he doesn't want to go back and forth with Kendrick, bro. He doesn't. He doesn't. That's why he's doing everything but getting in the booth. Like, like yeah, he's throwing little subliminal shots and shit, but it's like, that's all they are. They're like subliminal shots. Nigga, Kendrick name dropped you and mad other niggas. Nothing was the same since they dropped control and tucked the sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes. Nigga, that is a clear shot. That is a clear shot at you. A direct shot. And listen, you got to understand, this is coming from, from a motherfucker who, who, who's the first one to say that Drake killed Kendrick in Poetic Justice. He killed them in Poetic Justice. I'll be the first to say. But so? Like, come on, bro. When it comes to battle, when it comes to war, when it comes to this hip-hop shit. Like, nigga, fuck is you going on Vibe magazine talking about it for? And he over here talking about some a motherfucker trying to come up like this ain't 2013. Like, Good Kid Mad City ain't already dropped. Nigga, when Good Kid Mad City dropped, nigga, he was wiping you out in them awards. Cleaning you out. Fuck you mean a motherfucker trying to come up and shit? Nigga, he came up. He's already there. He been there. And he's still taking shots. And you still won't reply. Niggas on IG posting pictures talking about... Now at this point in the story, we're about to witness one of the biggest upsets in Grammy history. At the 56th annual Grammy Awards, Kendrick lost the hip hop album of the year to Macklemore and Ryan bro. Lewis. Bullshit. I will never was, forget this, bro. I will never so, forget this. People were outraged. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. All you gotta do is look at Pharrell's face, because it says it all. He's just trying to get off the stage as quickly as possible. Like, why? Why did they get me to do this? And Macklemore, feeling the heat, decided to text Kendrick afterwards and say that he felt he should have won and that he got robbed. And it would have been a nice gesture if he didn't take a screenshot of the text and post it on social media for everyone to see. I remember, I remember that, but let's just... <laughs> Yo, now nah, let's just read this. Let's just read this shit one more time. At 8.53 p.m., Kendrick... Nigga got his name saved as Kendrick Real, okay? You got robbed. I wanted you to win. You should have. It's weird and sucks that I robbed you. <laughs> come on, bro. Like, come on. You know you know how it go. You know the people in the background. You know. I was going to say that during the speech. Why well, didn't he? But, you know, I was going to say that during the speech, but it's just like so caught up. I was in the moment, nervous. You know how that shit go. Then the music started playing during my speech and I froze. Anyway, you know what it is. Congrats on this, on this year and your music. Appreciate you as an artist and as a friend. Much love. Now let's read the caption. Goddamn, 508 weeks ago. So what the fuck this mean? That means that he still got this shit up on his IG? Macklemore still has this shit up in, on his IG. Oh, that's fucked up. My, my text to Kendrick after the show. <laughs> he deserved the best rap album. I'm honored and completely blown away to win anything much less for Grammys. What? But in that category, he should have won in my opinion. And that's taking nothing away from the heights. Just giving Good Kim and City his proper respect. With that being said, thank you to the fans. You're the reasons you were on that stage tonight. You're the reasons we were on that stage tonight. And to play same love on that platform was a career highlight. The greatest honor of all. That's what this is about. Progress and art. Thank you. Grammys. This nigga hashtag the fucking Grammys. 
this fucking like who the fuck planted this nigga here bro like who planted this nigga clearly somebody in the background obviously kendrick was a clear win a obvious win but somebody in the background wanted this fucking white boy to win they just wanted this white boy to fucking win this year a screenshot of the text and post it on social media for everyone to see and I'm just a month later shit, drake gave his two cents in a rolling stone interview you won. Why are you posting your text message? Just chill. Take your W, and if you feel like you didn't deserve it, go get better, make better music. It felt cheap. It didn't feel genuine. Why do that? Why feel guilt? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's saying this? Oh, Drake is saying... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Drake is saying this about... i never seen this shit. I I never, like, yeah, I was paying attention, but I wasn't this deep in. Like, I wasn't just, you know, Rolling Stone magazine. Rolling Stone this shit. interview. You won. Why are you posting your text message? Just chill. Take your W, and if you feel like you didn't deserve it, go get better, make better music. It felt cheap. It didn't feel genuine. Why do that? Why feel guilt? You think those guys would pay homage to you if they won? Those guys. Fuck is you talking about? To name just Kendrick? That shit made me feel funny. No, in that case, you robbed everybody. We all need text messages. Nigga, he named... Nigga, there's a reason why he just named Kendrick, because Kendrick is the only one that was deserving of that fucking award. Now, granted, nothing was the same was nothing was the same. You feel me? Nothing was the classic. Classic. That's my intro. Come on. Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang forever. But come on, bro. Come on, bro. My old intro before this one was cartoons and cereal. Now, granted... Cartoons and Surrey wasn't on Good Kid Man City, but come on, bro. Like, stop, stop. Yo, Drake is a... Yo, bro. Aye, bro. Aye, bro. Now, you guys tell me, does Drake seem like he's defending Kendrick in this article, or does it seem like he's salty because he's not in the mix? At this point, the feud dies down for about eight months, and Drake even had some very kind words for Kendrick at his OVO fest when he brought out J. Cole. And while you all got your phones out, I want to shout out my nigga Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick. See, that's his problem. That's his problem. And I could tell this was a little more recent because Cole, bro, you could tell the years. Yo, you could tell when this shit was done because of Cole's hair, bro. His fucking hair. Look at his hair. Like, why is you shouting out? Why is you shouting out Kendrick for? <laughs> Kendrick don't fuck with you. He doesn't fuck with you. And that's the problem with this nigga Drake, bro. That's the problem with this nigga. Niggas don't fuck with you and you still do shit like this. Weird shit like this. Like, why the fuck is he doing this? What's the point of this? Motherfuckers in the crowd just holding up a can of beer right there. <laughs> that nigga drunk. <laughs> that nigga drunk. <laughs> why is you doing this, bro? It's like, whenever this nigga gets on stage, the adrenaline takes over, he has a mic, motherfuckers perform, this nigga just got done performing like 50 fucking hits. Now he just wants to show love to motherfuckers. Every time he's on, he's on the stage with Cole, he just gotta give a fucking heartwarming speech. Telling everybody how much he, he how much he fuck with Cole and shit. Like, come on, bro. That's just, yo, bro, you gotta chill, bro. You gotta chill. Kendrick was on my album. We went on tour together. That's one of the hardest niggas alive right there. He's legendary, so shout out to him. He should be standing right there. However, it looks like Kendrick did not get the message as just two months later, he responds to Drake's motor mouth line on a J-Rock track titled Pay For It. I tell him all the hell, King Kendrick resurrected my vengeance. Been Bitch, I say you more than my time. I break down the engine. engine. Clearly a response to Drake's subliminal on the language. Again, Kendrick inserts himself as the king, and he doesn't seem to think that Drake can go to distance with him. And At it all. Was two weeks later, where Kendrick gets asked about this alleged diss. You know, a lot of rumors are with the Drake thing. Like, you know, is, yeah. did you really bring the Drake thing back with the with the J uh, Rock single, or what's that about? What what what? what? I hear the, about the, the Drake feud. Or, See, look, oh, at, look, look at him Drake. going. Look yeah. at the, damn man, no. you're disgusting. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> People digging in, that's people digging in way too far. Once again, we're all reaching and it's, it's not about Drake. <laughs> and just a few days later, Yo! Kendrick would get asked about his now year old control verse, 
And this time, he said that all the people that mattered understood it. And for the people who didn't, Ooh. they don't matter. Ooh. The people that respected, you know, was, was, you know, people that knew the deal. Yeah. What's the important people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that respected and knew what yeah. it was. And, and, you know, people that don't yeah. respect it, obviously, they're just people that don't get it. And, and you know, really didn't matter. And again, Kendrick claims that the chances of seeing him and Drake go head to head is slim to none because they're two different artists. It's just a whole nother dynamic. I can't see myself uh, going bar for bar with Drake. You know, we, we're two different type of artists. You, dig you eat Drake. I've <laughs> argued that. And I honestly feel like this is just Kendrick downplaying Drake as <laughs> not being on his level. I don't think he respects Drake. I don't think he really this, ever respects bitch. Drake. And there's some underlying meaning behind this when he keeps saying it. Would Drake be somebody you would like to have some fun with? Nah, I, I, I couldn't. We come from two different worlds, mm. two different backgrounds. I, I really don't see that uh, playing out, you know, as, as entertaining. Maybe to, you know, the people listening, you know, but not for myself. Keep in mind, Kendrick was classified as the savior of hip hop. He was embraced by everyone just for the art, whereas someone like Drake- Oh! You just reminded me. Nigga, Kendrick ain't getting known because of the fucking take care interlude or going on tour with you. Nigga, he got known because of ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is fucking bliss. That's why he got known. Kill him while he's standing, stand over him, shake his hand and jump back in that minivan with that 223 in my hand. I back him down like Shaq with this black 223 in my hand. Better pray that this chopper jam. You better pray that this chopper fucking jam. Kill him while he's standing? If anybody should get credit for... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because now you tripping. Now you tripping. If anybody should get credit for that, for Kendrick getting popping, nigga, it should be Cole. It should be Cole. Cause if I remember correctly, I could have sworn to, I could have sworn, I, and Word Tool was in that Nardwar interview. It was in that Nardwar interview with Cole. They had said something about Cole mentioning Kendrick to Dr. Dre or some shit. And that's when, that, the, all right, bro. Really yo, 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 go. Drake, you the grassy motherfucker! ...put a distance to prove himself, and even then, he could never win over the fans that admired a certain level of lyricism. Many consider Drake to be a pop star, and I feel like Kendrick is saying this without really saying it. Just hold on, we're going home. However, next Drake drops his surprise mixtape, if you're reading this it's too late, and on that project, he had some more shots for Kendrick. They gon' say your name on them airwaves They gon' hit you up right after like it's only rap So Drake had claimed previously that he saw Kendrick just five days after the control verse And it was all love I know that that verse Nigga, it is all love That's the point that this nigga Drake has missed throughout all these years I mentioned your name <clears throat> Nigga, it's called friendly competition for a reason, bro it is called friendly competition for a reason. What is you getting in your feelings for? What is you taking shit to heart for? I didn't mention nothing about you personally. I ain't saying nothing about your family. I ain't saying nothing about what you got going on in your life, any of your bitches, none of that. All I did was mention your name and you the only mo Nigga, Meek got in the booth. Cole got in the booth. Even niggas that he didn't mention got in the fucking booth. Meanwhile, this nigga's in the interview. He's in the interview talking to Elliot fucking Wilson. Why is he talking to Elliot Wilson? Malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. And at this time, Drake was the talk of the town because this surprise project made a big splash. So just a few weeks later, Kendrick decided Shit to shake crazy. things up and finally dropped his long-awaited album by surprise as well. Uh, and when I wake up, I recognize you looking at me for the pay cut, but I'm a Naturally, fans and the media pitted the two albums against each other. Hendrick, bro, what? how do you- I've never heard that before. Bro, I've never heard, if you're reading this, it's too late versus to Pimple Butterfly. I've never heard that. You let Drake drop a mixtape that goes hard- 
Kendrick, bro, how do you let Drake drop a mixtape that goes harder than your album? A freaking mixtape. Harder than your... Bro, nigga, that was not no fucking mixtape, bro. That was not no mixtape. Of course they gonna call it a mixtape. That was not no mixtape, bro. Album. A freaking mixtape. Not gonna compare Drake and Kendrick anymore because they're not even playing the same sport right now. Kendrick is in his own league. Thanks. And comparing these projects makes zero sense. It's apples to oranges. Drake's project was great for club DJs, gym playlist, cruising in the car. Whereas you see, and Hendrix's album touched on real world issues, was chanted during protest, and is looked at today as one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. God damn! We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. However, Drake wasn't done as he let another one go on the game's track 100. I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. Again, Kendrick had just released The Pimp a Butterfly, his most conscious album to date, and Drake- Nigga, that just go- <laughs> Nigga, you just proved this fucking point. Y'all are two different artists, nigga. Y'all are two different artists. Y'all in two different lanes. I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. Again, Kendrick had just released The Pimp a Butterfly, his most conscious album to date, and Drake is basically saying that he could do that style if he wanted, but he's on a different mission with his music. Also important to note, the video for this track was filmed in Compton. So Drake is saying all this while in Kendrick City. I'm in the club every time that they play the competition. If they even play the competition, then I seen a response to get. Now Damn, that's crazy. And I just out the game was asked about this and he didn't see. Yeah, let me see what he know, cause I got something to say about the game, but let me see what he had to shot say. Shot at Kendrick, but he also didn't count it out. Drake was taking subliminals at Kendrick on that song and Kendrick called it and wanted to return something. I think that would be great for hip hop. However, one of Nah nigga. Nah. I ain't fucking with that right there, bro. I ain't fucking with that right there. Now granted, the game probably did it because Drake is one of the hottest artists. So, you know, a verse, he gonna take a verse, bro. He gonna take a fucking verse from Drake, obviously. He not gonna dub it. He ain't gonna deny it. But it's like, bro, to accept that verse and then bring that nigga to Compton and shoot a fucking video in Kendrick City, nigga, you tripping. You tripping. Knowing that Kendrick gave you the verses that he gave you, the city, recognize my life. Ridicule my fight, whatever the fuck the song that was. And then the other song where the game sampled Erica Badu, it's called On Me. On Me, that's on me. Raise up, nigga, you went out the homie. It was on the same album right here. It was on the same album right here. The documentary too, that's the documentary too. The same fucking album. Yo, bro, nah, you tripping, bro. Come on, bro, you supposed to hold that shit down. One of the worst things to be exposed for as a rapper was about to happen to Drake. Ooh. On July 22nd, 2015, Meek Mill took to Twitter to expose. Damn, how does everything happen on the fucking 22nd, bro? Who's Drake? For having ghostwriters. Tim. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What that tweet say Meek again? Mill took to Twitter to stop comparing Drake. Stop comparing Drake to me, yo. This this nigga Meek and Twitter has always Meek and tweets has always been like. Stop comparing Drake to me too. He don't write his own raps. That's why he ain't tweet my album because we found out. <laughs> yo, Meek is another sensitive ass mark. Like nigga, you gonna expose a nigga having a ghostwriter because he ain't tweet your fucking album? I guess, bro. I guess. To expose Drake for having ghostwriters. 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands, man. I can remember having a conversation with my little brother on the phone and we were both saying like, there's no way. There's no way that Drake has ghostwriters because he's too good of a writer himself. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, but bro, Drake is a fucking pop artist though, bro. Like you can't be mad at him for having a fucking ghostwriter when it comes to pop. Or when it comes to all the other genres and shit. Now, when it comes, to, now if he has a ghostwriter, when it comes to the hip hop, his hip hop songs, his hip hop verses, his rap verses, then yeah, you could come at him. But bro, his pop music, you can't be mad at him for having a ghostwriter, bro. Everybody got fucking ghostwriters of people in the studio that's helping them out. But the rap verses though, fucking Quentin Miller, Quentin fucking Miller. But boy, were we wrong. Okay, 10 bands, 50 bands, 
hundred bands, it, man. Did you hear the did you hear the reference track? Fifty bands, hundred bands, it, man. Did you hear the did you hear the reference track? I fucking track? heard it. Line I fucking line. heard it. I fucking heard it. And you know what's crazy? That just goes to show the the the, the voice matters. The voice matters, the person matters, the fame matters. The notoriety, the notoriety. How the fuck you say that word? The notoriety. I don't know, nigga. The fame matters. The voice matters. The delivery matters. The person matters. The artist matters. Cause listen to this shit. Listen to Quentin Miller's reference track. Boy, were we wrong? Okay, ten bands, fifty bands, hundred bands. Good man. Did you hear the? Did you hear the reference? I'm track? not listening to that for shit. Long. Word for word. This is bad. I ain't listening no, it's to a, that it's shit. A terrible time to be a Drake fan. Shortly after Meek's tweets, the reference tracks would leak to support the Ghostwriter allegations. And now we get back to Kendrick, who just a few months earlier made reference to rappers with Ghostwriters on his single King Kunta. What a rapper with a Ghostwriter. What the fuck happened? So basically Kendrick You know that's crazy because when that first drop people thought he was coming at Kanye found out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did and months before it even got exposed. And Kendrick is basically Wait, whoa, whoa, what? before we So basically Kendrick found out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did and months before it even got got exposed. Whoa, 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 hell no, hell no. I swore I went down, down. So basically Kendrick found out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did and months before it even got exposed. What? Nigga, that not nigga, that's cap. Hold on. And Kendrick is... Because if King Kunta came out in 2015 and Meek Mill tweeted that shit when... Cause word two, if I remember back to back came out like in when the fuck the Eek Mill took to Twitter to expose Drake. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Real quick. Let me do some research. Let me do some research. When the fuck did back to back come out? When the fuck did back to back come out? Yo, I'm tripping. Word. Nah, this is facts. Nah, I'm fucked up, bro. I'm fucked up right now, bro. Yo. So Meek set this in July 22nd, 2015. And To Pimp a Butterfly came out in what, March, April 2015? Damn. Earlier made reference to rappers with ghostwriters on his single King Kunta. What a rapper with a ghostwriter. What the fuck happened? Oh no. I swore I went down. So basically, Kendrick found a lot of y'all sharing bunks like you got the bottle. A lot of y'all sharing bars like you got the. Oh shit! A lot of y'all sa A lot of y'all sharing bars like you got the bottom bunk in the two man cell. out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did and months before it even got exposed and Kendrick is basically saying like I know what you've been up to buddy I'm not gonna say anything but I know with all that said as everyone knows Drake responded to Meek Mill with a now legendary diss record back to back and being a day one Drake fan for me personally I was never more proud of Drake in his whole entire career than when he dropped back to back. Notice how he didn't mention Charged Up though. <laughs> Notice how he didn't mention Charged Up, nigga. When Charged Up dropped, nigga, I remember that shit. Nigga, I remember that shit. Niggas was over here like, what the fuck? Nigga, what the fuck is this? And then Meek Mill had dropped the diss track towards Drake and he had like the Undertaker shit in the background. 
it was a whole bunch of shit going on. And then the the DJ, the flex, the flex from High 97 shit was going on. Bro, it was mad shit going on at this time, bro. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. If you ain't experienced hip hop during this time, bro, that was a time to be alive. Nigga, Drake over here talking about some what a time to be alive. This was a time to be alive for real, nigga. The new for record, real. Uh, back to back. Tough tune. Tough, tough tune. But once again, Kendrick responds to nigga, he, nigga Drake won a Grammy for a diss record. Bro. Drake just one month later this is on Dr. Dre's Compton album. But still I got enemies giving me energy, I wanna fight now. Yeah. Subliminal send me Oh shit, I mixed it up. I mixed it up. Remember in the beginning when I had said breaking down your motor motel, I break down the engine. I thought it was on the doc this is the Dr. Dre shit I was referring to. But it was actually on the J-Rock shit. I got it mixed up. I got it mixed like up. Hate. I thought I was holding a mic down. You thought this I was one, holding a mic Kendrick that, references that, 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 Drake's that, 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 recent that. track, Enemies. Got enemies. Got a lot of enemies. Kendrick is once again talking about how Drake keeps going the subliminal route, which at the end of the day is really no different from what he's doing. But he didn't stop there as he did it again on another song from the same album. They lied for the bury him, they nominated six to carry him. The beef is on his breath and heritage, the drama better than the great white. Cause this is life in my aquarium. The words they nominated six to carry him could potentially be a Drake reference given the fact that Toronto is referred to as the six. And if this is the case, Kendrick is basically saying that everyone seems to think that Drake is his greatest opponent, but that he's a great white and that this is his aquarium, aka he's the king of hip hop. And do you ever look back on any and feel like you'd like to change any of the any of the things that you've written or uh it'll be me saying I want to go deeper. I should have went deeper. I see. <laughs> you know, um I shouldn't have held back. I shouldn't have held back. And at this point, Kendrick finally gets his well-deserved moment at the Grammys, winning five awards, but more importantly, he finally clinched the best rap album category with To Pimp a Butterfly. Oh, glory to God, that's for sure. Drake also racked up a bunch of accolades in 2015. A thousand subs, bro. A thousand fucking... I, I, I should really break this fucking bottle, but I ain't gonna do that because it'll be dumb with me. Thousand fucking subs, bro. Clap it up, bro. Clap it up. I appreciate everybody, bro. For real, bro. I appreciate everybody, bro. I pray to God, bro. I be praying to God, bro. I be praying to God, bro. Dean, if you're reading this, it's too late. Broke Spotify's record for 17.3 million streams in its first week. Hotline Bling had dominated the charts, and his collaborative album with Future also did crazy numbers. And I mean, even at this point, anything Drake touches is gonna do numbers. Next, we Thanks. get some inside information that this situation between Drake and Kendrick could have got really ugly. Former NFL player turned commentator Marcellus Wiley wouldn't say any names, but said that years earlier he interviewed one of the two rappers <sighs> and they completely went off on the other. Uh, the Drake Kendrick <laughs> beef, uh, when it was really wow. starting to brew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on uh, Sports Nation at the time and we taped an interview with one of the people. Who? And that one person. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just said who. Based on whatever he's about to say, I'm gonna let you know exactly who the fuck it was. <laughs> Went in on the other person, oh. and we were ready to let this go. Uh, but then that one person's team made sure that didn't get out. Yeah, so. that Marcellus was quoted in a DJ Vlad interview as saying that the person went so hard in this interview that it could have brought the beef to the heights of 50 Cent and Ja Rule. It was Drake. <laughs> it was Drake, bro. If you ask me, it was Drake, bro. It was Drake. Because listen, throughout this video, they've been showing like interviews between the two. And Kendrick, the way he be responding to these questions is awesome. Oh no, friendly competition, uh, uh, whatever they like. He's on some, he's on some calm shit. Drake is the only motherfucker that gets in his feelings. So if you ask me, it was Drake in this interview that he's referring to. It and was you Drake, gotta bro. keep in mind, Marcellus is trying to sell a book, and he claimed that in this book he would expose everything that was said and who said it. And I bought the book. I spent the third. I didn't it? read it. I searched it. it. Who was here's it? what he had to say. We even got Drake on tape talking major shit about Kendrick during an interview. Of course, after watching Nigga, give me my credit! Give me my credit! That tape, but we still got it. Take my word for it. 
So that's it. That is the big expose. Like, I too was cheated, Come on. bamboozled, what? and let us- That ain't hard to tell, though! It ain't hard to tell! You can tell this nigga be in his feelings! Nigga be in his fucking feelings, bruh! Come on! Made by Marcellus Wiley. Now, we need to take any self-promotion tactics with a grain of salt, but the date surrounding this thing is very interesting. Hendrick drops the control verse Yo, that's on August crazy. 12, 2013. In a Hot 97 interview on September 24th, Drake was very bitter, and the very next day, September 25th, Drake appears on ESPN. Yo, yo, like, nah, this nigga's wildin'. Hold on, hold on. Next view on September 3rd. The date surrounding this thing is very interesting. Hendrick drops the control verse on August 12th, 2013. Yep. In a Hot 97 interview on September 24th, Drake was very bitter. And the very next day, September 25th, Drake appears on ESPN. And you guys could tell me what you think, but to me, I believe this story. I like, bro, believe that Drake did this. One doing everything but rapping, bro. Like, get up in that fucking booth, bro. Get up in that booth. <laughs> like Kendrick said, nigga, get up with me, nigga. Get up with me. Fuck Steve Dissing. Tiptoeing around my name, nigga. You lame. And when I get at you, homie, don't you tell me you was just playing. You sound like the last nigga I know. Might end up like the last nigga I know. Oh, you don't want to clash, nigga, I know. I got my foot on the gas, head on the road, hopping out before the vehicle crash. I'm on the road. Yelling one, two, three, four, five. I am the greatest rapper alive. 100%. So damn great, I personally enjoy I making died. like what great you music now is and a body support vibe. over like being the talk of Twitter for like five days, you know. Oh. However, in 2016, one man dominated the charts and that was Drake, smashing record after record, pumping out hit after hit. Views sold one million. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pumping out hit after No, no way you just left that shit out like that, bro. No way you just left that DJ Khaled song out like that, bro. You not gonna mention what he said on for free? You not gonna mention what he said on for free again? This nigga saying shit, thinking shit is cool. Shit is not cool. But this is what this nigga does, bro. That's what this nigga does. He, he be saying shit, thinking shit is cool. Nigga, shit ain't cool. Shit ain't cool. On that for free shit, nigga said. And like your boy from Compton said, you know this dick ain't free. Like, why is you fucking referencing? Why is you quoting and referencing motherfuckers that you got beef with? Like, why is he doing that? This nigga has never wanted beef. Russ is the beginning. He never wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this nigga. This is what I've been telling you, bro. He never wanted to do this shit. That's why he be taking the little subliminal shots he do. And that's why he goes on interviews. Like, bro, he goes on interviews with the with the thought process of this is what I'm going to talk about. This is what I'm going to mention. I, I, I shit like that. Nigga, Kendrick don't do that. He goes on these interviews. He just so happens to get asked certain questions. And he responds the way he responds. Friendly competition. You know, it ain't nothing serious. Nah, you know, it ain't nothing serious. Like, after hit... View sold 1 million in its first week and went on Come to become quadruple platinum that year. He had several number one records such as Work with Rihanna, For Free with DJ Khaled, and One Dance with This Kid. Right one now, Dance bro. actually became Spotify's most streamed song right ever. Now, and Spotify also I'm announced that Drake these, was though. the most streamed artist of 2016. Basically in 2016, Drake just dominated. And speaking of For Free by DJ Khaled, Drake actually mentioned Kendrick on that song. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Again, this appears to be more of a friendly nod to Kendrick, where Drake is referencing oh, his song, Yo! also nah. called For Free. Now nah, that's my bad! Now nah, that's my bad! However, 2017 was about that's to start, my bad. and Kendrick was about I spoke to too take soon. the most direct shots at Drake to date. Tiptoeing around my name, nigga, you lame. And when I get at you, homie, don't you date. Tiptoeing around my name, nigga, you lame. And when I get at you, homie, don't you tell me you was just playing. 
What's most interesting about this track? You sound like the last nigga I know. Timing of when Kendrick Don't end up like the last nigga I know. Just dropped his project More Life, which was oh, mostly a happy go summer vibe that contained no shots at Kendrick whatsoever. And just a few days later, God damn, Kendrick I'm already last, I'm already down to two. Aggressive 116 bar track that is full of shots at Drake. We're yelling one, two, three, four, five. I am the greatest rapper alive. So damn great, motherfucker, I've died. It's no secret that Drake has you see the background. Hold on. on this top five list, but more recently on More Life, he claimed that he was number you one see the on the list. I know I said top five, but I'm top two, and I'm not two, and I got one. Don't you have one, but it's not one, nigga, no. Nah. So let me get this straight. Kendrick hears this track, gets the pay. Why Peter Nip? All money booth, in. And sends a clear All money message in, all money out. Just a few the pay. days after Drake drops, that he's the best rapper alive. Ho oh, Jay Z, Hall of Fame, sit your punk ass down. Drake's been known to draw comparisons between himself and Hove, so it only makes sense that this shot was directed at Drake. I used to want to be on Rockefeller, then I turned into Jay. Lastly, Kendrick ends off the track to surprise fans and warn Drake that he's got a new album coming in a few weeks. You know what time it is, Annie up, this is him forever. Y'all got to lay with the seven to get your shit together. Kendrick was really strategic in releasing this track as it took most of the attention off Drake's project. And to add insult to injury, his fans flocked to Drake's Instagram account and spammed the number four in Roman numerals. And Kendrick, true to his word, he drops the album, and he has some more shots for Drake. Niggas wanna flex on me and be in LA for free, huh? Next time they hit the TM freeway, we need receipt, huh? Kendrick reference. Right back to that game shit. Right back to that game shit. Me and be but nigga, no, 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 come at game though. Like, come at game too. Game did that though. Come on. I like, I know he not gonna come at game, but bro, he's the reason why this shit happened. Be in LA for free, huh? Next time they hit the TM freeway, we need receipt, huh? Kendrick references Drake's track for free, and although Drake is from Toronto, He's lived in Calabasas since 2012. With that said, Kendrick is more than likely talking about how Drake was in Compton while shooting the video for 100. Kendrick is from Compton, probably didn't like it. Most of y'all throw rocks and try to hide your hand. Just say his name and I promise that you'll see Candyman. At this point, Kendrick is begging Drake to just call him out. He makes a reference to a popular 90s movie, Candyman. Where the premise of that movie is, if you say Candyman's name five times, he'll come kill you. Kendrick is basically saying, if fuck? you say my name, your career is dead. And I think Kendrick has something on Drake. Something scathing, something that... Whoa, whoa, what? Dead. And I think Kendrick has something on Drake. Something scathing, something that Drake doesn't want to see exposed. We've already seen Drake a couple times now try to dead this thing. There's more coming. But yeah, Kendrick keeps going. And Kendrick seem seemingly mocks Drake's style of music on his song God. You feel some type of way, then, ah, ah. <laughs> There's nobody gonna tell me that he's not mocking Drake here because Kendrick doesn't usually sound like this. This is Drake. I'm about to glow. Next, we hear Kendrick on Future Smash what the Hit fuck? Off. And this one is a very Woo! direct response to one of Drake's shots. Plan up, plan up, plan up. Gotta look yourself in the next one. How y'all let the conscious nigga go commercial while only making conscious albums? How y'all let the grades on TV? How y'all let the hood at the table? On 100 when he claimed now y'all don't even know how to rate him. Niggas looking like I'm a creative player. Pursue Everybody who's didn't pay respect. Then I stayed on some conscious. Response to Drake's claims on 100 when he claimed that he could take all of Kendrick's fans if he were to pursue the conscious hip hop lane. And I stayed on some conscious shit. But Kendrick had proven time and time again that he could have commercial success and be conscious at the same time. At this point, he had three cohesive projects under his belt, all of which were extreme. Nigga, don't forget. Don't fucking forget Section 80, bruh. Don't forget. Extremely successful. 
I'm African American. I'm African. I'm black as the moon. Heritage of a small village. Part of my residence. Hendrick had also proved. Hey, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That just reminded me. Bro, my last video, somebody commented talking about some Cole could go project for project with Drake. Nigga, no the fuck he cannot. No the fuck he cannot. Not at all. Salon Story versus Good Kim at City out of here. Salon Story versus Good Kim at City, nigga. Is you? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Not Good Kim at City. Salon Story versus Section 80, nigga. Out of here. Is you crazy? Section 80 versus Good Kim at... I mean, Section 80 versus Salon Story? Nigga, stop it, bro. Stop it. Good Kim at City versus Born Sinner? Stop it. Niggas is tripping, bro. Like, niggas just be saying anything. Like, I understand niggas be fans and niggas be fans and shit. But, bro, don't be biased. Don't be biased just because that's your favorite fucking artist. To pimp a butterfly versus Forrest Hills Job, we not going to do that. We not going to do that. Because Forrest Hills Job got the most replay value for me. He got the most replay value. And I've always been the first one to say, replay value is important when it comes to albums. But if we going as far as accolades... Grammys, awards, to Pimple Butterfly got it, but that's all depending on what you're going off of. Me, I go off of replay value. I'll still play Forest Hills Drive to this day, front to back, top to bottom. To Pimple Butterfly, there's only certain songs that I'll play off that shit, like you, How Much a Dollar Cost, Mortal Man, um, Wesley's Theory, and a couple other shit, a couple other shit, you know? Fast forward. K.O.D. versus... No, 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 no. Four Yards Only versus Damn? Oh, nigga, you crazy, bro. Oh, you crazy, bro. I take Damn all day, even though I got Four Yards Only in the background. Stop playing, bro. Like, come on, you He tripping. could easily navigate the pop music lane, having massively successful features with artists like Taylor Swift. We was OG like D.O.C., remember that? Remember that. My and again, when you listen to that track, he's not compromising his sound. Like, it is, he's still rapping. It, it's all bars. Now, I'm sure none of you- I'm not gonna lie, this is the second video I reacted from this dude. I like the way he says bars. <laughs> sound. I like the way he says bars. It, it, He's still rapping. It, it's all bars. Now, I'm sure bars. none of you forgot bars. about Drake's Ghostwriter I'll claims. Fuck with that. And Kendrick didn't forget either. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Kendrick gave his two cents on the situation. It depends what bro, arena you're empty, putting yourself bro. in. I called myself the best rapper. I cannot call what myself the, the best rapper if I have a ghost. Gone. If you're saying you're a different type of artist, self the best rapper, in. I sense on the situation. It depends what arena you're putting yourself in. I called myself the best rapper. I cannot call myself the best rapper if I have a ghostwriter. If you're saying you're a different type of artist and you don't really care about the art form of being the best rapper, then so be it. Make great music, but the title, it won't be there. And no matter how you slice it, the dude is not wrong. To be the best rapper, you need to write your bars. I would be lying if Yo, I- I'm not gonna lie. I like the fact that he has Biggie, Q, Pac, and who's that, Mac Miller? Yo, I like this lineup right here. Like, it's not really the lineup that you'll expect. Like, you'll expect Biggie, Pac, Nas, Jay, some shit like that. But this nigga got Cube, Nip, and Mac Miller. I don't know who he has in the middle. In the middle. But he has fucking Nip on there, bro. I fuck with y'all, bro. I fuck with this dude. Yo, what's his name, bro? What's the dirt? Nah, but what's his name, though? Like, he gotta have a name, bro. I said that when I found out that Drake had ghostwriters, that I didn't look at his music differently. I still listen to his music, but even now, when he says something dope, I got this this little voice in the back of my head that says, Yeah, it's dope, but did he write it? However, Ooh. Drake attempts to keep it friendly. I've had that fucking voice too, bro. I've again, had that voice too. tipping his hat to Kendrick when Damn outsold more life by over 100,000. Yo, bro, I promise you earlier in the video, whenever they started mentioning these projects, but I was gonna mention this shit, bro. Cause I remember at the time, like in 2017, when these shits dropped, for a fact, damn, I was, uh, damn, I don't know if it was outsold or outstreamed, but damn was higher than more life. But I remember this shit for a fact, bro. It was something on Apple Music. Some copies. Amazing to see our music moving. A fan had also commented, get Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole on the same record. 
and Drake liked the comment. Nigga, you never see that. Of course, Drake. He of course he liked the comment. Of course he liked the comment. Cause nigga don't want no beef. He don't want no fucking beef. That's this nigga's problem. He keep thinking shit is sweet, but shit ain't sweet. Shit never been sweet. That's why the two light skinned motherfuckers want to click up and shit. Fuck the big three. It's just me. It's just me. And what? Now, I hope at this point you guys can see the theme of Drake trying to squash it. And Kendrick seemingly responds to Drake's praise on his track All the Stars with SZA. Fuck you and all your expectations. I don't even want your congratulations. Kendrick is not trying to hear it. I'll say the that right there. Oh, you important. You the moral to the story. You endorse him. I don't even like you. I don't even like you, bro. Like, which is true. However, on the exact same day, Drake drops a track with some of his most obvious Yo. shots to date. Diplomatic nah, he unity. tripping. They try to compare us, but like a job straight out of high school, there's no you and I. I taught you everything you know. Now you got student pride. Nigga, that don't even matter, bro. Like, you already tried being buddy buddies, bro. Like, you try being buddy buddies with everybody. Like, come on. How you gonna try being buddy buddies with niggas? And then when you see that they not going for it, they still coming at you. They still dissing you. Now you want to continue with the disses and shit? No, we not doing that. We not doing that. One minute he giving props, the next minute he dissing? No! Drake does not like the Kendrick comparisons, and he brings it back to when he helped Kendrick with his career early on. What makes this clearly about Kendrick is the No You and I line, which were both tracks from Kendrick's The Pimp a Butterfly. And I love myself. Ooh, nah, I fuck with that right there, though. I fuck with for that both right there, tracks though. from Kendrick's The Pimp a Butterfly. There's no you and I. Damn. You and I was definitely. And I love myself. The, world is again, the two would then go head to head at the 2018 Billboard Awards. Many question who would be crowned as Rapper of the Year. And once again, Kendrick came out drastically ahead. And yet again, Drake attempts to be friendly by sharing some old That's Twitter DMs between himself and Kendrick. Yo, my man, what's the word? Finishing my project, section 80. When you back Nigga, in I got Cali, that motherfucking polo. I know that shit'll be incredible. Nigga, we I got, got that motherfucking polo sweatsuit on deck, nigga. I got that polo sweats on deck. My fault, my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. I'm tripping right now. I'm tripping right now. Just chill. Just chill. Sit down. Let me sit the fuck down. Bro, I told y'all in the beginning. Yo, bro, I told y'all in the beginning. I told y'all. Twitter DMs between himself and Kendrick. Yo, my man, what's the word? Whoa, 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 whoa. Some old Twitter DMs. And yet again, Drake attempts to be friendly by sharing some old Twitter DMs. Between himself and Kendrick. Yo, my man, what's the word? Finishing my projects. 2011, I, I so, I so, he's talking to Kendrick, which means the blue is Drake. No, I don't give, I don't care. I, what's good, fam? Yo, my man. Nigga, like, why is you, why is you writing yo? Why is he writing yo with so many O's? Why is he doing that? I never write yo with so many O's. Yo, my man, what's the word? Just working on detox and fish finishing my project, Section 80. When you back in Cali, I know that shit will be incredible. We got to do something for real. I'll be back for BET Awards this month. 80, when you back in Cali, I know that shit will be incredible. We got to do something for real. I'll be back for BET Awards this month. And this could be one of two things, really. Like, Drake could be saying... Look, man, we used to be cool. Like, remember? Can we get back to that? No! Nigga, it's 2017, 2018. Why is he posting shit from 2011? Yo, bro. All right, bro. Yo, all I'm saying is, if this nigga sends Cole out to handle his work, bro, because like I said in the other video, this nigga Kendrick doesn't want to diss Cole. He don't want to diss Cole. Cole was catching a straight because he's all buddy buddies with Drake. Nigga, he got beef with Drake, bruh. He don't got beef with Cole. 
He got beef with Drake. If this nigga Drake sends out code to handle his work and he doesn't get in that fucking booth. All these years, Drake has never set a direct shot. He's always set subliminals. He's always set subliminals. He's never set a name. He's never been direct. Kendrick is as direct as can be, nigga. He said first person shooter. He said first person shooter. He said for all your dogs getting buried. All your dogs is getting buried. I never been a dog. Nigga, I never even heard that project front to back. I only heard like one song off that shit, which was 8 a.m. in Charlotte. He posted this shit from 2011 Cause he's scared He never wanted problems with him He never wanted problems with him Forgive me bro It ain't me It's this shit right now We are hour 22 in Come on bro Stop playing This is gonna be a long ass video Or he could be This a This a 1000 special right here This a 1000 sub special right here A thousand sub special Throwing this back in Kendrick's face again that he's the one that gave him a start and like, I put you on, remember? Regardless of the reasoning, Drake still had another subliminal for Kendrick on Sandra's Rose. Bury me and I'll be born again. I walk in godly form amongst the mortal men. Again, Drake makes reference to another track from mortal the Butterfly fucking man. with the words mortal men. In this one, Drake continues to insert himself as being a caliber above Kendrick. But I don't know. I'm no mortal man. And Drake ends off the year with even more compliments for Kendrick in a Rap Radar interview. I have a lot of respect for, you know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm, Three-headed um, monster. Yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of respect for those guys because they also continue to, you know, stay true to what we started, started with um, and finding new ways to do it. However, th bro, like this is just embarrassing, bro. This is just embarrassing. This nigga's like that one delusional bitch in your life that she just she like you tell her shit is over with and she just doesn't believe that shit is over with. It's like in her head, y'all still together and shit. It's like what the fuck, bro? How how, how <laughs> and how many different like your comprehension skills are low? How many different ways am I supposed to explain this shit to you? Nigga, we not cool, bro. We not cool. And this nigga still trying to piece shit up. No. Things go quiet in 2020. Keep in mind, Kendrick wasn't releasing any music, and fans started to question if the feud was over. I don't think that the Drake Kendrick tension is dead. I think that last decade they fought as long as they could fought and the decade ended without us having a decisive winner. And I don't think either of them have, have gotten off of that. And people call Joe crazy all the time, but Joe Budden is right about a lot of shit. He is. And while Kendrick has gone ghost, nowhere to be found, Drake completely dominated the music business. Nah, he is I'm though. Talking about Oprah's bank account, Tussy Slide, Nonstop, In My Feelings, God's Plan, Nice for What, Pop Star, Life is Good, Chicago Freestyle, Laugh Now, Cry Later. Wait, what's going on? This is just undeniable. Like, there's, there's no other artist on earth who is doing this except for Drake. However, in Wait, 2021, what? the boogeyman himself, Kendrick Lamar, Ooh, rises from the dead the and has some man. shots for Drake on Family Ties with Baby Keen. Which, which we reacted to the video. Come on, bro, that shit went crazy. And on your top five tonight. 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 Again, he's did we, firing. Did we react to this? Oh no, I reacted to the hillbilly shit. I reacted to the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause in 2021, I wasn't even doing this shit. I wasn't even doing this YouTube shit. I re I I re I watched the Family Ties shit. Family Ties. No no no, not Family Ties. Um, the Hillbilly shit. Was that Hillbilly shit called? I don't fucking know. Five two nine nine. Again, he's firing back at Drake. Five seven. Now, I'm messy, girl. That shit. Top five claims. Top five, no debating. Top five, top five, top five. And Kendrick would continue on to address Drake's claims about <laughs> being the goat. I am the Omega. At the end of the track, Baby Keem seemingly reveals that Drake has been DMing his girl. Number two DMing my 
that's cool, I don't, that's why. See, and that's the problem, bro. That's the problem with this nigga Drake. Like, why is, yo, bro, this motherfucker Drake is like a pussy whipped ass motherfucker, bro. He is a pussy whipped ass motherfucker. This motherfucker lets pussy control him, bro. That's why he got beef with Metro right now. That's why he got beef with Future right now. And they at him. They at his neck. And he just want to piece shit up all day. Niggas ain't piecing shit up, bro. Niggas ain't piecing shit up. And Future is the one motherfucker that you should not have beef with, bro. Especially not Metro Boom and a fucking producer. Oh, come on, bro. They at you, bro. They at you. Come on. I'm taking Future and Metro over 21 and Drake all day. All day. Because you got to understand who's on Metro Boomin' and Future side. Metro Boomin' got Future. He got Kendrick. He got Drake. He got Pusha T. Who the fuck else he got? He got Meek. Because I know Meek ain't... Uh, Alright, bro. Meek is out here wearing, wearing a fucking OVO chain and shit. Yo, we not even going to talk about Meek, bro. This nigga Meek is on some Diddy shit. And you know we saying no Diddy. We saying no Diddy. We ain't saying pause no more. We saying no Diddy. However, just a month later, Drake would reply to Kendrick again on his song, No Friends in the Industry. Drake knows at this point when it comes to selling records, when it comes to breaking records, nobody is standing next to him in hip hop. He simply dominates on a commercial scale. With all that said, Drake was now celebrating 10 years of Take Care, and he decided to share an old photo of him and Kendrick. And I get it, like, you know, he helped with the project, nice gesture, but why keep doing this? Why keep being friendly to someone who doesn't respect you? However, at this point, four you know, years you know, have passed you know, since Kendrick had dropped smoke, an bro. album, and while he was on a milk box missing, Drake was still very much active, releasing Certified Lover Boy. That album went on to break Spotify's record for the most streams in a single day, and in that same year, he also had some notable bangers like Wants and Needs with Little Baby. But finally, after five fucking years, we get the Kendrick album. <laughs> Rain on me, put the blame on me, got guilt, got hurt, got shame on me. And sadly, a lot of people did not like this album. I'm not one of them. I absolutely loved it. I'm also a big therapy guy because I'm, I'm bipolar. I don't really have any choice but not be a, a therapy guy, but this project definitely connected with me, at least. And it was on this album where Kendrick admitted on a song that he didn't understand why Drake and Kanye squashed their beef. When Kanye got back with Drake, I was slightly confused. Guess I'm not mature as I think. Got some healing to do. In my opinion, this is just Kendrick's way. Now you gotta understand, although I didn't fuck with this project in its entirety, bro, it's still some shit that I fought. Like, bro, Kodak, that Kodak shit? Nigga, stop playing, bro. This shit right here? Stop playing, bro. Telling Drake that he has zero intentions of ever patching things up with him. And there's people that we meet all the time that we just don't like. Like, sometimes it's for no reason at all. And Kendrick's got a reason. Next, Drake gets extra petty by releasing a dance album, Honestly never mind, on Kendrick's birthday. If I come Whoa! And Kendrick's got a reason. Next, Drake gets extra petty by releasing a dance album, Honestly Never Mind, on Kendrick's birthday. See, I never knew that he dropped that shit on Kendrick's birthday, bro. Like, why the f like what the fuck is wrong with this dude, bro? I was wrong. Like, bro, his level of pettiness is like on some feminine shit, bro. This nigga's level of pettiness is on some feminine shit. If I come around you, can I be myself? Drake knows damn well that Kendrick is Like, it ain't like he dropped some fire shit on... Like, this nigga dropped honestly, never mind. Like, nigga, honestly, let's be real. Nigga, how many of y'all motherfuckers go to honestly, never mind, nigga? Stop fucking playing, bro. Stop playing, bro. The last person that would ever release a project like this one. And what better way of saying, look at how versatile I am, than by dropping a project like this on his birthday. Now, I don't think this little stunt bothered Kendrick at all, but it was still pretty strategic from Drake. But Drake was not done yet. On a track with Lil Uzi, he took some really obvious shots at Kendrick. Now you gotta take a back seat. 
So, just a few months earlier, Kendrick had very similar wording on his N95 track. Drake is insinuating that Kendrick is more or less running a grift when it comes to what he's saying in his music. He's basically claiming that Kendrick doesn't really stand by or believe what he's preaching, and he also reminds Kendrick that he's the one who put him on. What made this reference even more obvious is the line, now you gotta take a back seat, which is clearly a reference to Kendrick's backseat freestyle. My mind is living on cloud nine and this nine is never on vacation. And just like me, it Yo. looks like Drake really enjoyed Kendrick's new project as he showed up in the audience at Kendrick's show in Toronto. Yo, crazy, man. Again, nigga, what the f what nigga do with nigga? What the fuck did you just say to me? Whoa, 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 whoa. Kendrick hears this track. Oh fuck, I just pressed the button. Hold on, let me go back to where I was at, because what the fuck did you just say to me, bro? Or believe what he's preaching, and he all even more obvious, Kendrick's backseat audience at Kendrick's show in Toronto. As he showed up in the... Drake attended Kendrick Lamar's Toronto show, which could be a good sign for their complicated relations. Nigga, when, what year was this? Audience at Kendrick's show in Toronto. Yo, Again, Drake knows what he's doing. He knows the blogs are going to pick this up. The question is, was he there to show love or was he there to play chess? I mean, at this point, based on the history of Drake's friendliness, I'm just going to chalk it up to him just trying to be cool with him again. And for Kendrick, what better way of taking five years away than by dropping an album and cleaning house again at the BET Awards? Going into the awards, Drake was way ahead of everybody with 14 nominations, but it didn't matter because Kendrick mopped the floor with them, winning Damn. Best Hip Hop Video, Damn. Best Live Performer, Damn. Lyricist of the Year, Damn. Video Director of the Year, Damn. Album of the Year, Damn. and Artist of the Year. Oh. However, Shit. Drake wasn't very impressed with Kendrick's five-year delay, and he let everyone know about it while on tour. I don't know about these guys that go away three, four, five years, want to chill out, all that shit. That's not me. And I want to ask you guys this. You how many... Three, four, five years that go away without dropping a single thing, and nigga, you still get mopped up at these award shows. Like, nigga, that's why you really mad. That's why you really mad. That's why you really going on stage and you letting out all these emotions. You letting out all these fucking soft-ass fucking... Whatever the fuck you saying. Like, come on, if it really ain't matter, if you really felt the way you felt, you wouldn't even be mentioning it. You just let it be. But remember, those who mention shit are the ones who fucking feel some type of way. You know, they feel some type of way, bro. How many times has Kendrick said something nice about Drake in the last decade? Now what? And that's my point. Zero. That's my fucking point. Zero. It's all been Drake. We've got seven or eight examples here in this video of Drake complimenting Kendrick, saying that he wants to do music with him, reminiscing on old times, just being friendly with him, and Kendrick has said fucking nothing. At all. I gotta all. tell you something. The guy did a good job. He did. He did a good job with that. It came across my feet. Edit. Good to see it edited correctly. Here, what's the dirt? Yeah. Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Where the fuck is my little white shit? Oh, here it is. Uh-huh. Say what? Bitch, I'm about to blow no, uh, up. Praise God, it's hard to stay spiritual. How you got these niggas on the TV selling miracles? You mean to tell me everything gonna be fine if I call your hotline and pay $29.99? Why ain't you say so? <sighs> bro, I fucked at this video right here. Bro. I ain't gonna lie, we was lit, bro. Listen, listen, don't mind me, bro. Don't mind me and all my pauses, all my extra shit. Listen. This shit right here, this shit is crazy, bro. I did this for y'all, bro. I did this for y'all. I got like this for y'all. I finished this whole bottle for y'all. A thousand subs, bro. A thousand fucking subs, bro. We did that shit. Let's get it. More to come. More to come. 1,500 next. 2,000 next. 10,000 next. 50,000 next, 100,000 next, 500k next, a mil next. Come on, bro. We're going to keep on going, bro. We're going to keep on going. I appreciate all the love and support. I appreciate y'all. You feel me? 
That's the end of this video right here. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see me react to next. Follow me on IG. The links is down below in the description and right here on the side at Rose A5. And I'm going to see you in the next video, bro. Word. I'm going to holla at y'all.